My name is Chuck Olenek. I'm a reenactor. But I also use my reenacting skills, interests, hobbies to bring history to life in the classroom. Now what I want to do is bring landmarks to life. Before European contact, there were estimates of 150,000 to maybe a quarter of a million native Californians speaking over 300 dialects of approximately 100 distinct languages. And this is going to change radically when the Spanish arrive in 1769, establishing 21 missions, four presidios, and three pueblos, controlling a sixth of California. This is where the ranchos of Los Angeles County get their start. This is the site of the first attempt at Mission San Gabriel in September 8, 1771. A party of 10 soldiers and a couple of padres came here and they were confronted by the local Tongva who were not really happy seeing them until legend has it the padres spread out a tapestry of the Virgin Mary and the Tongva were amazed by the beauty of it or so the story goes so if the first attempt at the mission was built here unfortunately <laughs> this is a floodplain In 1775, in order to get away from the flooding, the mission was moved north by about five miles. So this is the mission that is known as San Gabriel. When you visit a restored mission and you walk through the arched corridors and you look inside the thick walled adobe rooms and you see the embroidered robes and the illuminated music books bound in rawhide and the Indian made furniture and the tools of the time period and you hear about the secularization and the hard times for the missions understand that the nearby Indians left their rancherias either voluntarily or through compulsion giving up freedom for security and they were put to work, often buried five deep in the cemeteries. While the missions were prospering, there was a movement to take land from them. And this was going to be the beginning of the Rancho period. At first, land was given away far away from the missions. But once secularization took place, a land rush occurred, and this is where you're going to see the birth of Rancho San Jose. This is known as the Padre Oak, and it's in Pomona. In 1837, it is believed that the very first religious service, a service of Thanksgiving, was held here in the Pomona Valley. The two dawns established their domain between the mountain known as Juatna, or Snowy Mountain in the language of the Tongva, later Mount San Antonio, later Mount Baldy, and the hill known as El Pedregoso, which later became Elephant Hill, beneath the Padre Oak. Don Ignacio and Don Ricardo, the lords of Rancho San Jose, would divide the rancho between them. Don Ignacio would take the northern portion, it being called Rancho San Jose Arriba. That same year, 1837, the Palomares family built this place, what's known as Primera Casa, 
in the Pomona Valley. Just about eh, half a mile from the Padre Oak. Don Ignacio and his wife, Dona Concepcion, usually called Dona China, ended up building a five-room adobe, rather modest one, and they settled down there with their children. All right, let's go see where Ricardo Vejar built his home. Don Ricardo Vejar, like his partner Don Ignacio, had served as a judge of the plains. He would settle in what became known as Rancho San Jose Abajo, the lower portion. Three and a half miles to the southwest, according to Google Maps, at the base of El Pedregoso, which people today call Elephant Hill, Ricardo Bihar built his home. This is one of his homes, not the brick one. The brick one would be built in 1875, and that's the Phillips Mansion. But on the lot, further back, is one of Don Ricardo's homes. This is where he settled. In 1840, the Areñas, Carrion, and Alvarado families joined the rancho. Hey, let's take a trip to Casa Alvarado now. Getting some serious drive time here. And we went all the way to the other end of the property. Casa Alvarado. Behind me is Casa Alvarado, built on the same property as Primera Casa. Don Ignacio invited his friend Ignacio Alvarado to live on the property with the stipulation that Alvarado would build a chapel in his home to be used for church services when Padres visited from Mission San Gabriel. That worked out. That didn't last very long. Areñas sold off his third share of the rancho to Henry Dalton of Rancho Azusa de Dalton. From 1846 to 1848, the Mexican War or Mexican-American War was fought and the U.S. acquired a considerable portion of the Southwest, including California. And that changed the fortunes of those who held land grants. They had to go through a lengthy process to get their land grants reaffirmed. In some cases, it'd be like 17 years. It was a very expensive process. And so the fortunes of a lot of the landholders, like the Palomares and the Vihar families, you know, changed radically. What Ignacio Palomares did while he was sorting out his legal problems, as were all the other landholders, you know, under Mexican law, and working that out with the U.S. government, is he decided to build a new home for himself and his large family. And he chose to build this home right alongside the trail between Mission San Gabriel and the Ostestencia in San Bernardino, which is now technically in Redlands. This was, after all, the trail that Jedediah Smith, the American explorer, took when he visited Mission San Gabriel. And as more Americans were moving in, this trail became more important. So Don Ignacio, his wife Doña China, ended up building a 13-room adobe built in a T-shape with a courtyard. Um, there was a mixture of Mexican adobe construction and American styles, you know, to this uh, home. There was a use of wood shake roofing and milled wood flooring on the adobe structure. The Palomares home was reportedly the heart of the rancho with its doors open to travelers.
when you see the adobe, you need to take yourself back in time and you need to imagine this is a feudal lord's manor house. This is the center of his vast domain. Now I, like many locals, was used to seeing an adobe wall surrounding this building. And so I assumed, as have many locals, that this is the original structure. No, this is a uh, rebuilt wall. And they actually didn't use a wall, they used fencing. Over time, more Americans moved into the area. And the trail that ran between Mission San Gabriel and Asistancia San Bernardino will become a major stagecoach route. And this is a prime location. So people could often stop and stay here for the night as they're traveling between the two places. Also, having a store put in didn't hurt either. For the last Mexican mayor of Los Angeles, life was exciting inside the thick walls of his adobe. He had eight children. He had a whole bunch of grandchildren. His friendship with Don Ricardo strengthened over the years. Together, the two of them gave away land to family and friends and built a community which prospered. Palomares wrote before his death, What do I want of gold? All these fertile leagues of land are mine. Every smoke you see rising is from the home of one of my children or one of my friends to whom I have given the land. The fortunes of the founding families of Rancho San Jose changed radically. Ricardo Vihar lost his deed to his portion of the rancho. He moved to Spadra, built a home there, passed away. Spadra no longer exists. It got basically taken over by Pomona as it was growing. In 1864, Don Ignacio Palomares passed away. The next year, his widow, Donna Concepcion, sold off the holdings of the property. And by the early 1880s, the Adobe de Palomar is completely dilapidated and people showed little interest in it for many years. By 1888, the city of Pomona ended up being incorporated. But that's going to be a story for another time.